to get going. I know I'm between you guys and the beer, so we'll get going quickly. There's a quick word of, from my sponsor. Uh, Risk Five formed in 2015. There's a guy who's been in there from almost from the beginning, um, and it's grown quite a bit. Okay, last number I have is 2,500 plus members in 2025. Um, excuse me for a second. And then it's growing. There's a lot of different extensions. It's going well. Andes, we're pure play CPU IP company. We're, we're based in Taiwan. We went public in 2017. Um, and um, we make RISC-V CPUs, but we like to think we make RISC-V plus CPUs. We'll talk about those pluses, how that helps us. So, and this RISC-V cores are established. We have multiple markets, multiple customers in different market place for mobile, MCU, storage, cloud, data center, and 5G networks. And this is how I see Andy sees the market and how we've been doing. We all started with embedded controllers. Nobody would have given RISC-V a central CPU in the beginning. So we started with embedded controllers, state machines, and as I joke, 8051 replacements. And we did well. Then we moved on to um, more accelerators. We were the accelerators, DSP instructions, vectors, um, and we moved on to more mainstream. And now we're getting into more MCU, standalone CPU space. Renaissance announced general purpose um, MIPS and these RISC-V based processors. We're going well. And last space is the application processor. We are starting to see some application processors based on RISC-V. Also, because RISC-V processors have gotten higher performance enough to run these at human event times. So, on to the next frontier. What's next? Well, let's talk about what processors we have today. So, we have processors in entry-level series, N22, that does very well. We have 25 series that's been a workhorse, and 27 series, that's vectors, and more high performance memory movement, and 45 series, super scalar processor. This is the to the right and up, right? CPU technologies always go to the right in time. And when you go right, CPU performance always goes up. Things are right and up, but we're taking a slightly different detour, for me at least. We're starting to introduce functional safety cores. Our first core I introduced a couple of months ago is N25FSE, which is fully ASOB certified CPU IP processor. So we have all this processor. Now what got us being able to get to certification quickly is our, our history. So as, as I said before, Andes, Andes existed way before RISC-V. And we had our own generation processors, version one, two, three. And after we had version three, we we're looking for 64-bit architecture. That's when RISC-V came around. And we adopted RISC-V. So all the processors today are RISC-V based. But what Andes has is we start with RISC-V, but then we have all these extra technology we used to have. Um, CodeDense, StackSafe, PowerBreak, we'll talk about those and how they're, they're used. Uh, there's some custom extensions, DSP extensions, security, uh, wrapped up with software tools. So our processor is RISC-V. We have some extra technology that you can use optionally or stay RISC-V compliant. So a few things that I want to highlight. Well, we have our own preemptive RISC-V interrupt controller, PLEC. We have a technology called StackSafe. Now this is interesting, and this will be used very valuable when we talk about the functional safety course. Um, next one is PowerBreak to do a frequency or pipeline scaling. We have a quick nap technology to power down and wake up. And lastly, we have a very fine-grained cache control management instructions. So what can we do? We could look at the memory usage with Stack, StackSafe. We could use the pipeline usage with PowerBreak. We have control of the pipeline, control of the processor, control of the caches. So power-wise, what do we have, what the PowerBreak does? We all know DVFS. We could scale the processor in frequency. But we could do it under software control. 
So I could control number of clocks going into my pipeline. Okay, I could slow down the processor. Processor is what takes power. I could trade off performance with power. And then I could do a little more, uh, put it into retention or drive dormant mode as well. So we have control over the clocks and the pipeline. Next thing we have is control over the stack. Okay. We've all ho heard about the stack overflow bugs and other things. And as I'm not a good software programmer, I'm more a hardware guy, and my stack usually overflows when I write code. So what we have is we have this stack safe technology where you run it in the development mode or recording mode. You watch how deep your stack is. And then when you field your software, you go into a protection mode or a dynamic run mode, runtime. Runtime, I will check that stack. If it overflows, what that means is something strange happened. Okay, something I unexpected, something didn't happen in the development mode happened, and we could trap and deal with it. Okay, so we have this extra technologies to help the processor. So, along with this, we have processors, new processors coming out. This current roadmap with a couple of new points. We're improving the 27 series. Um, and then we're introducing vectors with our superscalar multiprocessor core. So next, after this, what we're going to do is add functional safety cores um, and really go superscalar out of order processor AX60 series. Okay? So we, we're working on, we're always going up to the right, right and up, but we're also going sideways, taking the proven technology pipeline CPU and adding technologies, adding capabilities, adding certifications. So we'll talk about a couple of things. We'll talk about D23. It's our new entry level processor. And we'll, I'll mention a little bit on our functional safety course. So D23, we had a very successful N22 processor, which was one of the smallest with 32 bit with five cores with the smallest code size. So we're taking that design and we're designing a sort of new design with two to three stage pipeline D23 in our terminology. When you see a D, that means it's a DSP optional instructions, risk five P draft extension uh, that we've been shipping for a long time. We have a lot of customers. It's gonna support all the standard RV32 IE Mac, um, the B extension and new code density uh, extension as well. Uh, with optional floating point, DSP, crypto, and cash operations. We'll have full privilege modes as optional, and most of these features will be optional. So it'll be as small as possible and also fully featured. The multi multipliers will be optional, branch prediction will be optional. So the end users can really customize the processor to either performance, power, area. And this goes along with the memory subsystem as well. You could have the uh, instruction cache, read-only memories, and local memories, and we're staying with the HP interfaces. So performance-wise, we think at 28 nanometer, it'll easily achieve 800 megahertz, deliver more than four core marks per megahertz. So it'll be a nice, compact, high-performance processor. So after this processor, What's, what's more interesting, which is certified functional safety certified course. Um, we are already in some of these designs. We're in cabin radar, TDDI, automotive NCU, and auto storage devices. And how we got started was initially with the ISO 9000 series certification. And this has been multi-year step process and get the ISO 26262 development process certification. And finally, uh, recently we achieved full certification for ASO B for single processor N25F. And the key thing is the safety manual that the uh, end users could incorporate into their designs. Now here's the uh, table of contents, but it's a full set of safety manuals to go along with the certification. So this, is built on the 25 series that we've had for a long time. 
but many designs, T-Link, Kineron, um, and PicoCom and other companies that are designing 25 series. This processor will also be based on some of the Renaissance cores as well. Um, so it's N25F safety enhanced core based on our popular 25 series core, full IMF FD. Um, it has a compact five stage pipeline. It has a code size reduction technology called CodeDense, StackSafe, PMP, ECC, and more that existed. And in fact, StackSafe plays a key role in the certification process. It is fully SOB compliant. And obviously, safety package is a key deliverable. So next one that's coming up is N25 in our terminology is microcontroller. Um, we actually have DSP extensions and bit manipulation extensions. Bit manipulation came a little too late in the certification process to be an N series, uh, but it is available. The D25F has a DSP instructions. So the next processor that's been certified is D25F SE. So it's a 25 series with DSP for automotive certification, um, with the P extension being the main difference between the uh, N25 and D25, okay. and with the B extension as well. Just to give you a quick idea what the P extension performance difference is, um, D25F and the 64 variants deliver about two to three times acceleration in math computational technologies. So really good for, we used to call it lightweight signal processing. So D25 is built on the 20, N25 pipeline with the SP instructions. D25 core has been shipping for a long time. It's available for AXI HP interfaces. Now, one key thing that's different between our standard core and the safety certified core is safety certified core has a little less configuration options. We we'll pick the popular options and certify those options as well. So hopefully it covers 99% of use cases. If not, I guess that's my department to help you find a way to achieve that. So this is sort of a roadmap for the functional safety road, um, applications. Our intention is to introduce a new safety certified core based on the existing pipeline, at least the one core per year. So we have the uh, NND25F with its ASOB certified. We will start introducing uh, perhaps ASO D level dual core lockstep cores as well at different performance points. So I think I'm doing okay. This is my last slide, that's my brain. So time to ask me any questions. Otherwise, so come see me at my booth. We have some goodies. And uh, like I said, I think Andy's is sponsoring beer at 510. Any questions? Drew, it's called risk five, not risk V. <laughs> no questions, either either they're really good or really bad. <laughs> yes. Right, that's the plus, plus risk five plus plus part we have. The stack safe technology is proprietary um, extensions where you do have one register you, that counts the um, stack entry and exits with the addresses and you, you program the maximum value and in doing execution any stack operations will cause a counter to increment and decrement to, and generate a regular exception uh, when it overflows, it actually underflows as well. Thank you. Okay. If there are no questions, I'll be here today and tomorrow. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I know about the Risk Five. I know about the MIPS. I know how to do air conditioning. So, I know. Look at my hands. Okay. Thank you.